Let's take it into some LeBron James discussions coming off that absolutely yep. incredible Game 7 effort. But Harris, our first headline here around LeBron, he's kind of tired. He is. After Game 7, he straight up said, I'm burnt. I want to go home. So the they asked him, like, are you thinking about the series of the Raptors? And he just straight up was like, no, I'm completely burnt out. I'm exhausted. And at age 33, after a full seven-game series where you're just – you know, grinding it out. I can understand him kind of telling the reporters, you know, back off. I'm not ready for it. But look, that Pacers series was one of the first times in recent memories where we have truly seen a vulnerable Cavs team. I'm talking since LeBron James has come back. The Cavs team that he has had has never looked so weak and so able to just be pushed to the side. Mm -hmm. This is a Pacers team, sure, that's good. They're decently coached. There is no reason why that, that series should have gone to seven games unless the Cavs are seriously damaged as an overall team. And, Tom, I'm not afraid to say this. Their roster is completely useless. I'm sorry. I said this during the trade deadline. I, Rodney Hood and George Hill are nice options. The rest of the roster is completely useless. Kevin Love can do nothing. Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance, the experiment, has really lost a lot of its fire. Mm -hmm. Tristan Thompson played one good game in the entire series and just so happened to be game seven. J.R. Smith is way past his prime. Th this, this Cavs team, it, it's, it's the Cleveland LeBrons. Yeah, I mean, kind of piggybacking off that, I think, bringing us to our next headline. He did absolutely oh, he did. carry the Cavs. He truly willed them to a victory there. Averaged 34 points over that seven-game series. Led his team in boards, assists, steals, blocks, minutes, everything I, that he led them in. Three times as many points as any teammates and five times as many as assists. He's the first player, multiple games in a series, scoring 45 points and shooting over 60% since MJ did it. And they almost lost. Yeah, which is what's that's, that's the concerning thing. This is the greatest test in NBA history as to whether or not a single player can win a conference. Because now you have a lot of teams in front of them. Because let's say, you know, the, the Celtics beat the Sixers and now you have the Raptors. So now he's to go up against a very well-coached Raptors team and then an even better coached Celtics team. This is the ultimate test for LeBron James. Because if he wants to stay in Cleveland, he now knows if he can make it to the finals of this. I don't need more teammates. I just need myself. Mm -hmm. But if he loses in the East, now he knows, all right, I got to leave because my teammates just aren't good enough to, get, to help me get to the finals. Mm -hmm. And remember, that is still always LeBron James' number one priority. He wants to get to the finals. Can I get to the NBA Finals with this team? And if he can't, he's going to leave. So, Harris, will the Cavs win the East? I still think yes. I'm still putting my money on the Cavs and LeBron. I'm saying, I will never doubt him. I'm saying no. I, I just think that this – Cavs team is mortally wounded. Kevin Love is is just a shell of himself. He doesn't the look entire the same. starting five is, is like I said, it's completely worthless. Rodney Hood is not ready for prime time. No player hit 20 points in that series outside of Brown. Um, and, and I'm sorry. Okay. I said this about George Hill when they got him at the trade deadline. If George Hill is the difference between you making and not making the NBA Finals, you got a lot of problems on your team. George Hill should never be the reason you make or don't make an NBA Finals. All right, folks, are you looking for a new or used car? Are you tired of browsing a million different sites? Go to Autolist.com to browse the largest source of inventory on the web for cars or just download the top-rated mobile app on iPhone or Android. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Autolist app. It's all about simplicity, like you said it before, is. Tom, and that's yeah. what Autolist brings I like here. things that make my life easier, and that's what Autolist does. All right, sticking with the LeBron discussion here, he's now first in playoff minutes and steals more records for Bron. You know, I've been hearing a lot of kind of headlines about LeBron James and them talking about, you know, why is he putting so much effort onto this Cavs team? Like, wouldn't uh, it be he wants smarter for him to just kind of take a step back? And, you know, we have a couple people in the big sports media, as I call them, saying that this is going to be LeBron James's lost season. There's no such thing as a LeBron James lost season. Every single season for LeBron is a, it is an adventure and a story of its own. And this story, or this year's story for LeBron is how far can he legitimately carry a bad roster at prime LeBron level? Because we saw him carry a couple rosters in his early to mid-20s where that wasn't peak LeBron. We're still in the middle of peak LeBron right now. So it, it's, a, it's kind of the LeBron versus MJ argument of, you know, MJ in his prime, he did have Pippen, but prime MJ just 
brought all those Bulls teams to the finals. Like, just every single year with no difficulty, also because the East was pretty weak at the time. But, look, LeBron with this team in his prime is the ultimate test for him. Can mm. I get a team to the finals by myself? No, no Kyrie Irving, no Kevin Love, basically. A team full of old vets who don't do anything in the fourth quarter. Mm. And we're seeing the fatigue start to set in. It is. We really are. I mean, for a guy of his age to be leading the team in playoff minutes and the entire league in mm. minutes as well, it shouldn't be happening. And I get it. It's LeBron James. But you got to just, like, sit him. I mean, he played almost the entirety of Game 7, mm. which is not healthy for him. I, I think he might burn out. Like, this... I get he said it. he was he, he said he was burnt after game seven. He's, he's a tired. superhero. I get it. I went and saw Avengers Infinity War. He would have fit right in on a basketball court. But at the <laughs> same time, he's still a human being. And eventually that human side of him is going to come out and he's gonna run out of steam. All right, let's take it off the court then for this next discussion here. He still leads the way in NBA shoe sales. Maybe that's not a big surprise there, but overall. James and the overall NBA shoe sale market dropped this year by about 13.6%. The only players, or the only top five guys' shoes who didn't drop in sales, Kyrie Irving. I, Still a fun point. I though. will never claim to be an NBA shoe expert. I just simply won't. I like, I like them. I think they're cool to look at. But James Yoder, our CEO here at Chat Sports, is definitely the quote-unquote shoe expert that I, know, that I know about. I'll always ask him about the cool shoes that are coming out. But for me... I think there's a lot of fatigue going on in the shoe world right now. Every single day, another shoe is coming out. Every other day, you know, Matthew Dellavedova has his own shoe. Like, every single time, if you score 20 points in a game, you're getting a shoe deal from someone. Like, Andrew Wiggins has a shoe deal. Ben McElmore got a shoe deal when he got drafted out of college. Like, stop giving out shoe deals. Keep it for the elite level guys so that they actually mean something. The reason that Kyrie Irving shoe deals went up because it meant something, because he moved teams, and they came out with a whole new style of shoes. Too many shoes out there. I don't even wear them, and I think there's too many out there. All right, folks, we'll get back to the on-court discussion now. The big one for this coming series, can the Raptors slow down LeBron James? They're counting on players that outside of Canada maybe not, might not be, and I guess Indiana for, for OG, aren't quite the home run names and the, and the well-known names. Counterpoint. Does it matter, do they need to slow him down because the rest of the Cavs team is so bad? It's kind of like what we saw the Celtics do last night with Joel Embiid, how he still put up 31 points and almost double-digit rebounds along with six assists, and they still beat them by 16 points, mostly because they hit more threes. So if you're the Raptors and you see, all right, I see a weak Cavs team and I see a LeBron that's kind of running out of steam here. Don't you let him for the first couple of games play his crazy minutes, do everything you possibly can to scrape out these games. Maybe the Cavs come out of game three with a two-to-one lead, but at that point, LeBron James had played almost 130 minutes in three more playoff games against a tough-nosed defensive basketball team. I don't know if the Raptors necessarily care if they can slow down LeBron because the rest of the team is so bad. Just shoot a bunch of threes and let LeBron tire himself out. That's what they did with the Wizards. The Wizards in that series, they just kind of said, all right, Go ahead, John Wall, hoist up a bunch of twos, and we're just going to nail threes and just beat you that way, which is what they've been doing all year. I think this Raptors team is the exact opposite of what the Cavs team is right now. They're a hard-nosed defensive team that shoots a lot of threes, is consistent, and doesn't have a lot of star power. I know they have DeMar and Kyle Lowry, but they're not the same overall, against LeBron. It, it, exactly. It's the complete opposite. This is a very well-oiled machine of a Raptors team. This isn't the Raptors team of old. I don't think it matters if they can stop LeBron because they can stop everyone So else. your main argument is the points are fine, the assists is what you don't want to see high. Exactly. Like Take the Pacers, right? You know, Victor Oladipo, Lance Stevenson. Inject that Pacers team with steroids and you have the Raptors. I I'm serious. Like The rosters that the Pacers and the Raptors have are unbelievably similar, but the Raptors are just better at everything that so Pacers they got the secret the stuff they do have saying. the secret stuff okay. they have their own secret stuff so you know, we know how that ended though right it, it, we do know how that ended it's very true okay but you have for instance like Jonas Valanciunas is an upgraded Miles Turner DeMar DeRozan is upgraded Victor Oladipo Kyle Lowry is an upgraded Lance Stevenson like all these guys across the board I mean CJ Miles went from the Pacers to the Raptors for crying out loud like these teams are very similar but if, if the Raptors and the Cavs met in the first round, the Raptors would have beat the Cavs, without a question. Now you're saying they have to meet in the second round, and LeBron James is exhausted? 
I, I, I'm sorry. I still don't know how they win the series. Obviously, James has always been great against Toronto. One yep. more note from this year in particular. He almost doubled his free throw attempts. That's a concern for Toronto. You cannot get mm -hmm. your guys in foul trouble. Exactly. Take it back to that game seven, and my God, LeBron James was absolutely incredible. It's over. First player to drop 45 in multiple game sevens. Now, he hasn't lost since 2008 in a game seven, but there was between 2012 and 2008, there wasn't a game seven. So, yeah, that's a little bit deceptive, but we've reached about a decade now where I'm, he hasn't lost a game I seven. I am officially, as of right now, Harris Rubenstein is ending the narrative that LeBron James is not clutch. That should have been ended years it. ago. It is done. It is over. Kaput. Gone. If you are in an NBA argument with someone and they tell you that LeBron James is not clutch, walk away because that person does not know basketball. I'm tired of this. He is one of the best, if not the best, Game 7 performers in the history of basketball. I'm convinced at this point that if you go into a Game 7 and you're a betting man and you bet against LeBron James, you are burning money. You are burning money. You're not going to win. I get it. If, you know, over a course of a series, will LeBron put up some of those Game 7-esque performances and lose? Yes, because it's not a Game 7. But you go into that, it's LeBron's. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, you're just not going to beat him. He's going to put up 45 against you. He's going to win. And also, this doesn't even extend to just Game 7s. This is elimination games in general where he always shows up. Ever since his, you know, weird NBA Finals against the Mavs, he has become one of the best clutch mm -hmm. performers in the history of basketball. And it's only going to get better. I, I, towards the end of his career, you're going to start to see him not try in the first half of NBA games. Mm -hmm. it, it's just... He's going to stop trying because it's not going to end up mattering. And then the third and fourth quarter, you're going to see prime LeBron James come back when he's 34, 35, and 36. Because he's just going to blow people away in the second half of playoff games. Not even included in that game seven in that clutchness factor was the game five buzzer beater, yep. which was absolutely incredible. That was fine defense. Like, it wasn't great defense by any means, but... Like, the minute he got the ball, I was like, oh, it's in. It looked exactly like, it was, like it was going shot in. against Utah. Now, it sure, one in. of them was in, you know, the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> the was in the finals. But, you know, people are talking. It doesn't matter. All right. Let's say the Cavs get bounced early. That's only going to increase the chatter about LeBron leaving Cleveland. One of the top options that have been mentioned so far is the Philadelphia 76ers. But Charles Barkley doesn't believe that's going to happen at all. He says there is he is not coming to Philly for sure in any way, form, in any form, shape, or capacity, and in large part because of the fit between Ben Simmons and LeBron, which I actually do understand. I do too. Because they play very similar styles. They need the ball in their hands. They're not elite shooters, especially not Ben Simmons. If you bring in LeBron, you're kind of negatively impacting what Simmons does best. LeBron James is also a lot about legacy. And I think for him going to the 76ers, it wouldn't hurt his legacy. But remember, he's about a guy who wants to leave something behind. Do you know what he wants to leave behind for the entire Eastern Conference and the NBA in general? He wants to leave Ben Simmons behind. They share an agent. The two of them are very close. LeBron James probably looks at him as some sort of protege. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think it'd be a good move for LeBron to go to Philly simply because he's doing what he always wanted to do. He wanted to make sure the NBA itself could survive without him. And honestly, if LeBron James goes out of the playoffs and you have an Eastern Conference Finals of the 76ers versus the Raptors, that's still going to get good ratings because of how captivating Ben Simmons has become mm -hmm. this year. If LeBron goes to the 76ers, would it be a lot of fun? Yeah. Would it be cool to see Simmons and LeBron on the court at the same time with Embiid? Yes, it would. But from a basketball standpoint, would it help LeBron's overall career? I don't think so. I think it would shorten his career. I think it would make him do more on a court than he needs to. I think if you send him to L.A. where there's a lot more shooters, mm -hmm. it allows him to do less, and it will extend his career a couple years because he won't be taking the brunt of so many hits when he's in his you know late 30s, early 40s, when he does end up playing in his early 40s because he's going to. I, I, think, I still think LeBron is going to end up with the Lakers or the Cavs. I think this whole Rockets nonsense – is exactly what that is. It's a bunch of nonsense. It, there's no way that the Rockets are going to find a way to fit LeBron James in the cap and still be able to field a competitive NBA basketball team. They're going to have to field you and I on the bench in order to make sure they have a full roster every single night. I think it's the Lakers or the Cavs. They have enough money, and it just makes the most sense from a basketball standpoint. Folks, keep those votes flowing there. A heart for the Cavs, a like for the Rockets, a wow face for the Lakers, and a laughy face for the 76ers. If you think it's somebody else like the Spurs or whomever, let us know in the comments section yep. as well.